Alright, making a video. I'm out early. It is uh, what's called Earth Day here. Except it's not really Earth Day. Uh, but it's the town cleanup. And, uh, you know, people, well, <laughs> two or three anyway, show up to do something beneficial to the environment out of compassion, let's say. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, so it's called, this is all going to be psychobabble kind of talk. Um, well, something opposed to sort of psychobabble that's out there. Um, you know, regarding what, what, what motivates people, what drives people, how brains work, psychology, all that kind of crap probably. So I have to play with my own neuroses as I have a, an anxiety disorder. And, uh, uh, yeah, the, the place they're going to go clean up is kind of outside of my comfort zone. Yeah, it's kind of far, far, far away. And so it's going to be a long walk. And, uh, yeah, I'm just getting too old for this shit. That kind of thing. My back is shit anyway. But anyway, I'm doing it. I'm starting. I don't know if I'm going to get there. But, uh, we'll see. Um... But yeah, I don't, uh, you know, I don't have much expectation that I'm going to be able to deal with the, uh, you know, being in a circumstance where there's just maybe too many people, too much noise, too many cars, too much stuff, and it's going to uh, flood to my senses and cause my neuroses, my, my panicky kind of reaction... <laughs> my brain is going to say, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. And, uh, you know, which is its 40-year pattern. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see. Sometimes it doesn't work. My, my brain says it, and I'm able to say, eh, fuck you. <laughs> I feel good. Everything's okay. But other times I... You know, usually, <laughs> the tendency is that, uh, you know, any little misery I have becomes a bigger misery. Uh, and uh, the warm, comfortable piece of my couch becomes, you know, more and more compelling. And uh, I avoid. <laughs> yeah, I get the hell out. Um, it really is quite... I mean, I'm trivializing it in a sense, but I mean, you know, this disorder really is quite, uh, it does create some profoundly miserable sensations, and uh, you really are quite sick, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not pleasant at all, uh, but anyway, um, so that's what I'm doing, but I mean, it's in the context of, okay, so to be serious, post a video to concordance. You know, expecting him to, uh, whatever, debunk the pseudoscience of some Davison guy who's a neurobiologist, or whatever they call themselves. Uh, so he's had some education, and yet he calls the Dalai Lama his holiness. I mean, any scientist who calls the Dalai Lama his holiness, or your holiness, or any of that holiness crap, Frankly, they should have their their scientific credentials pulled. Um, I mean, please. Uh, yeah, it's just so uh, so obnoxious. So anyway, uh, so I, you know, I don't even. Can you do the short of it of these kind of things? I mean, it's just wrong on so many levels. <laughs> you know, the the whole monkey thing. Of course, we can recondition brains. We can, they're reactive organisms, uh, organs, um, and the reactions are um, conditionable. We're conditioned all the time. People, there's some people who, if I tell them certain words in a certain order, uh, like your husband's dead or something, they'll faint. They'll actually have a faint because I said words to them. Words will go into their brain, process, their brain will hysterically react with a, a bunch of chemicals and they will faint. They will lose consciousness. Now, this has been a phenomenon that's 
been observed for <laughs> forever. And yet <laughs> this guy, this, this scientist of hers, um, talks like he invented it. Like he, he discovered something new, that brains are reactive. And that through practices, you can change the brain's reaction. Amazing. Now, yeah, this is the other dilemma. The stream's a little high. It rained like hell last night. And uh, so I might be thwarted before I even get started. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty thwartable. Oh, dear. I really don't want to have wet feet all the way there. Uh, I really don't want to take my shoes off. But there aren't a whole lot of options here, are there? Uh, let's see, I've come this far, right, as they say. Uh, really no good place upstream. Probably take me less time to take my boots off. Okay, boots off. And uh, I'll see you in a bit. Whew, that was cold. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I just noticed something, you know, again, I, you know, you're conscious of being conscious when you're talking about being conscious. And uh, so I didn't have a place to sit to put my boots back on, so I was doing it standing. And, uh, you know, I've noticed myself being kind of sloppy when I'm standing on one foot. But it's only the one foot. I mean, it's the, the stroke leg that's the problem. Um... Uh, from, you know, I had a stroke 10 years ago, and, uh, you know, even though it seems recovered, <laughs> it's uh, the change that has taken place in terms of the wiring uh, is apparent when you test it with, you know, not normal behavior. So, you know, one foot balance on that one foot is not really as practical as it is on the other foot. Uh, so, just uh, throwing it in there and that the um, science that To Be Serious uh, can <laughs> link to uh, was a lot about changing the brain, uh, you know, how it's changed. And it was all in the veil of this compassion word, you know, like there's a, <laughs> some sort of, uh, you know, how, how do you even do this? They had a word for it. I hate that I've forgotten it because it's such a funny term, but, um, you know, they're like, uh, these monks have a, a professional compassion practice, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they just pop into compassion, full compassion mode, and they they do it in their heart. Oh, it's just pathetic. As they call this science. Um, so anyway, the, the evidence for it is, you know, yes, they use scientific instruments to do it, but it's, uh, you know, MRIs and all that stuff. But it's not good science. Uh, you know, you want to see differences in brain activity, you know, put a drunk in the MRI. Put a kid stoned in the MRI, and you'll see a difference in brain activity. Uh, tell somebody to, to, to put the professional compassion practicer and compare him to somebody you tell to just think about butterflies. Butterflies, butterflies, nothing but butterflies. Don't think about anything but a butterfly. Try to just think about butterflies. Uh, you know, so the whole thing is just a, you know, and I, I imagine you'll have similar results comparing it to something. Uh, you know, the alternative is think about nothing but people on fire, and car accidents, and uh, see if people's, you know, heart rate goes up and brain activity changes. Uh, I'd say, of course it would. Uh, and <laughs> we've known that forever. Uh, so anyway, just, uh, you know, this junk is everywhere, all this psychobabble stuff. Uh, clearly, our whole personality is uh, a mush, <laughs> a distillation 
of personal experience. And there's certainly lots of routines. Like I wanna, I'll go for a little run here soon. Uh, so I'm late, number one. Number two, it might de-stress me. Um, but there's, yeah, there's activities you can engage in, whether it's meditation or running or contemplation <laughs> or listening to music or whatever it be. That could be a, a ritual, a, a way to get your brain do a soft reboot kind of thing. Organize it, uh, get it ready for its... Uh, what it's going to do. We all do this when we face something we, you know, uh, might be afraid to do. We have to get ourselves in the mood. Uh, you know, if you're going to go skydiving, there is that point where you have to push yourself out the plane and you play a few psychological games to, you know, get yourself uh, comfortable with that idea. And, uh, you know, this is the nature of uh, having a psychology. This is not magic or you know, something we haven't known forever, that we are reactive personalities. Um, you know, I guess the, nobody would, <laughs> would really want to uh, you know, play too long or too hard with the idea that Yes, we can be molded into anything. Uh, we can be conditioned, uh, you know, into all kinds of different people. You could start with the same baby, and uh, you know, depending on how you expose it to the world, it will be a subda substantially uh, different human being. Uh, it'll end up, uh, you know, in a very different. Uh, plays, very different uh, styles of play of, of, you know, the game, uh, you know, just by changing a few uh, environmental circumstances, a few habits, a few uh, ways of interacting, uh, you could completely civilize or de-civilize human beings. I think that's, that's another thing that's quite apparent, quite obvious. Uh, you know, the connection between boorish and cruel and crude behavior, uh, you know, and less than brilliant, uh, less than enriched uh, maturations is pretty clear. Not that there aren't lots of uh, evil, sadistic lunatics that come out of the elite, but again, they're created also. Uh, you know, by, uh, you know, a, another perversion of environment when it's so uh, protected or so uh, indulgent, uh, you know, that they gain no appreciation uh, for real risk. Uh, you know, if you, if you lived your life as a, uh, a high-wire performer, and, uh, you know, one guy did it all the time with no net, and another guy did it all the time with a net. I'm sure they, <laughs> they'd have very different MRI scans regarding what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, life's going to do that. You're going to have to condition yourself quite differently when failure is a possibility and when failure is an impossibility. Uh, you're going to have a different mindset when uh, there's not much risk in an equation. So, you know, it's all kind of bullshit and such. So anyway, I better get to the run part here. Uh, Semi nice day, a little chilly and everything's wet. But, uh, so far, not horrible. Yeah. So, until shortly or whatever, or however. Yeah, I'd be back. A little winded. <laughs> anyway, I haven't been here in a long time. I used to, this is why I used to hang out when I was a kid a lot. That used to be the first house on my paper route on this dead end here. 
all the way up that hill, for four miles. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> See, even those kind of things, right? Uh, it did give me a mindset when I was a kid, having a job. Uh, you know, I had to do it every day. You had to do like the mailman, rain or shine. Couldn't make excuses. Uh, you know, people stood at their doors <laughs> waiting for their paper. You know, couldn't be 10 minutes late. Couldn't be a little wet. You know, so you learn not really compassion, but you learn a kind of practical, well, this is what you got to do in the world to be a respectable human. Uh, you know, you got to perform these these duties uh, appropriately and such. So they still call this Patriot's Path. <laughs> so this should end up where I'm heading. Uh, at least it did when I was a kid. Whether it still goes there, I don't know. <laughs> it should be a little side path that'll take me up the bat away. But frankly, it shouldn't be for a while. Well, yeah, not too much of a while. <laughs> yeah. It's all the, you know, things hook around, come down the other side. So even though that point and the point I'm going to end up with are about three miles, well, two miles away, uh, as the crow walks, uh, they're almost next to each other in each other's backyard, so to say. So, so yeah, I haven't been here in ooh, 10 years. Yeah, about that. So they have fixed this. This this, this, this this used to not have gravel on it. It used to be just a mud trail. So it's kind of nice. They've made a... It's better, it's better than the path in, in the, the official park in my backyard, which is sort of irritating. Yeah. Why do these people have it better? Not in my backyard, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway... Ah, uh, yeah, I don't want to get off the subject too much. Trees are down here too, of course. Big ones there, there, there. That's an old fall there, of course. See, they put in all this piping. Very nice. Big pipe there. Yeah, very nice. Look at this big plastic pipe. Didn't think they made plastic that big vinyl. That is a big one. So up this stream should be my goal. Usually these environmental things have something to do with the headwaters of the Raritan River. Yeah, see there's some junk there. Could probably pick that up now. <laughs> oh, my back. Yeah, I'm not gonna be very useful. Oh. Horrible drinks for pigs. Anyway, horribly colored. Look at that coral. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what else is news? Squirrel, gray squirrel. If you can see him or not, I don't know. On the tree, turning around, running. Yeah, this camera doesn't have high enough resolution for that shit. So anyway, so I should be able to just follow the marshes here. That's the commons over there. There's the stream is going that way. But this path should should V up here if I recall. And then I'll, I should be able to. <laughs> yeah, it should be. So that's kind of neat the way they did all this up. Yeah, very nice. So, oh, that's a big tree down. Big tree. And that must be, I don't know, 15 feet of 
<laughs> tree roots in here. Yeah, it's a big ball. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting all worried. That I'm not going to get to a, the proper destination or something. The creek is still here. So it's looking good. But who knows? I just don't like being this far from home. <laughs> yeah, really is nice up here though. Very nice. Right, just amazing, all the trees. I mean, Pirro has the same thing, just a ton of trees down where he is. But it looks like his are down because it's a bog. Maybe beavers did it. But it's not, it's just so nice. Anyway, I should get the other camera out. Get some high definition. But, one step at a time. Get where I'm going first. So anyway, psychology is uh, obviously mutable. There's power words, power thoughts, power ideas. <laughs> you know, you can veil the rituals in all kinds of mumbo jumbo, but they're all just programming mechanisms. They're all just bits of Morpheus that you run in your head, and the little Morpheus program can boost you up or it can tear you down. And it's just the way it works. <laughs> yeah, you become stronger or you get weaker. And uh, that shouldn't be the right road. It should be. That's further than I thought. I said that already. This bridge is about to go. Now, the question is, that won't do it, I don't think. I gotta go this way. Uh, this is just winding around and around. <laughs> yeah, so you can start watching me panic. I start having some negative thoughts. Oh, it's winding around and around. Oh, I have to walk home. Look at this nice little marsh. Yeah, very nice. It has all that tall grass growing in, in the summer. Very nice. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. It's because the... Look at that. You got duckweed. You got mush. You got crud. Slime. Goop. Glop. Oh, probably a ton of mosquitoes grow in there, though. Look at me. I'm carrying you know, a bunch of crap. I thought I was about... I thought I was right there, actually. Now this looks like something promising. That's a big gulping. That should be where I'm, I should be ending up there. <laughs> That's where the people should be. They're the ones that are going to scare me. Yep, that really should be there. And unfortunately, my path is going this way. <laughs> I ain't walking through the marsh. That's our shoresies. I guess that's why the path goes all the way around here, because this is really wet. Yeah, I used to be able to, it used to not be this wet. You used to really go straight into that, back of that building there. Well, the building wasn't there when I was a kid. It's a, it's a health and racket club. <laughs> yeah, so I almost, uh, yeah, some of the things I almost did. <laughs> yeah, I almost had a, I almost had a yogurt shop inside of there. Almost <sighs> went out shopping for the hardware and you know was making the deal and it all kind of just fell through because <laughs> you know it's one of those things where kind of all the risk was going to be on my capital and the owner of the place was going to be kind of. Oh yeah, well, if it makes money, I get money, and if it fails, well, <laughs> don't bitch at me. You invested. See, there's no path here. I am, I am in big trouble. I gotta get over there. Over there, I gotta get. Can't be going this way. This ain't gonna get me nowhere. So there's a path here. Not very likable. But it'll have to do. Alright, am I done? Yeah, I'm done for now. 
I'm just bambling and rambling. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I'll be fretting over. I can't get there. No, I want to. I don't want to get there. That's the irony, right? I don't really want to get there. So this would be a wonderful excuse not to get there. Well, I don't hear anybody. <laughs> but then, yeah, there's, why would I hear anybody? Uh, you know, four people show up. There's another. There's, oh, there's a whole bunch of garbage in here. I'm gonna pick them all up now. Get a bag and do it proper. All right, I think we'll just conclude here. Oh, look at that food. People are pigs. Yeah. Undergarments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a popsicle and a fuck. Okay. Yeah. They're just so disgusting. These people really are pigs. This is a beautiful area. Look at this trash. Fuckers. Fuckers, I say. I'm probably gonna get arrested. Or something. <laughs> They'll probably think I'm bringing my litter. Yes, I'm bringing litter to throw. Look at all this crap. Terrible. Horrible. This is a fence here. So I should be able to walk along the fence. That should take me to the, uh, the, uh, to the wizard. <laughs> yes, the wizard bridge. Ooh, it's a good one. Okay, I'm rolling now. <laughs> this is stupid. I have to call an ambulance to get me home. Anyway. Look at that nice lumber. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> me steely. <laughs> Ooh, forklift. Ooh. Ooh, me wanny. <sighs> me wanny, me takey. Me happy. Me something like that. What the hell? Man, I've, I haven't been here in so long. I don't know what all this crap is. Holy crap, I made it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think this is way out of my range. Yeah, I know. Civilization. Ooh. <laughs> you have to keep these things closer to my house. Sorry. Oh, this is weird. Well, I is. found a ton of garbage. Yeah, yeah so there's I see. so much garbage out there. So, yeah, uh, lots of work to do. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, I made it. <laughs> yeah, pretty successful little uh, adventure. Oh, I just put the camera away. Pretty stupid of me. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. But I'm not getting it out again. Uh, I'm tired. Mm. Having a real cigarette. A real cigarette with me. It's a reward for being a good citizen and such. I'm not sure, but I think I took the wrong path. <laughs> we'll find out. Let's see where I end up. Lost. But lost in a really nice place to die. Looks like one of those places where you just get eaten by the swamp. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is just, yeah, I remember this. So when we came this morning, there was no frogs. So, see, remember the duckweed <laughs> frog? So the frogs hadn't quite woke up yet. But it has warmed up. And is quite lovely and blah blah blah. Yeah, I'm surprised there isn't more. You know, I find so few turtles and other kind of animals. Well, this is such a nice environment for such stuff. I really have to try to get here in the summer. Yeah, I really will have to try to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, so, what else is news? I have to remember which way to go here. 
There are some interesting little things here and there. If I remember the inverse of how I came. Ah, so I do remember this bridge. Oh, there's a piece of litter. I did bring a bag with me, but I'm really... I'll do it another day. I'm tired. Alright, I think I came down this way. Yeah. Ah, so where is he? What can I say interesting about the psychological experience? So anyway, yeah, so I'd actually been to some place uh, I hadn't been in 30 years. <laughs> you know, the, the local mini mall. And uh, that was really interesting. But, you know, I did walk around a little. It was pretty bold and comfortable. And all of a sudden the brain started wheeling. And uh, subconsciously it was saying, this is not your normal environment. <laughs> Something unusual is happening. You don't like this. Uh, you know, I wasn't saying it consciously, but it was saying it subconsciously. Uh, you could just feel the tension start to grow. <laughs> yeah. And once the tension grows, the thoughts now start kicking in. You know, as soon as you feel the feedback, you just go with that. And it just keeps accelerating. And I'm sure that's the exact opposite for meditative practice is a negative feedback instead of a positive feedback. You just keep uh, practicing the negating of sensation, negating of um, what your body's saying and uh, keep controlling merely with uh, imagery. Uh, mental pictures and such. Um, thoughts, symbolic words, uh, mantra, uh, words, uh, ideas. Just, sorry, looking. This is the, yeah, this is really the beginning of the Raritan River kind of thing. One of the beginnings. <laughs> it's not much of a beginning, but it is what it is. Trying its best. Um, so yeah, the stream I cross down here a ways is the same stream as here, except it's twice the volume by the time it gets to where I am. And uh, but that's how streams work, and sort of the inverse of the delta. They just get bigger and bigger. So it's that big. I have markers, you know, indicating which path takes you where. I just have these blue symbols, which aren't very helpful. Um, you no, know, I just remember to keep bearing leftish. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'll definitely have to do this again. This is really, it's a very different forest than the one in my backyard. A lot more trees. Um, no barberry. Well, not no is the wrong word to use. But a lot less of it. I mean, if this was my woods, it would be barberries all over the place. The barberries apparently don't like the wet. And perhaps the deer don't like it as much either. Maybe the deer deforest this area less because they don't like uh, wet feet <laughs> or something. Yeah, maybe. It's a possible potential theory. Yeah. That's a nice idea, isn't it? It's too bad they didn't do more of that. Look at that. What a... Yeah, just put a couple of notches in. Oh, flatness section. There you go. Not much of a view here right at the moment, though. Bunch of felled trees. All right. I shall come here and sit here again. So says I. I shall return, as famous people say. Mm -hmm. With many soldiers. Yes. We shall take rightful ownership.
of the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Instead of in mendum, it would be my mendum. Look at all these little vinyl pipes. There's somebody that did a lot of work back here to improve it in some way, I suspect. And I do remember it. There you go. Uh, old healthy gent. <laughs> Up for a jog. I gotta do that again. Jogging thing. I just can't get into it. <laughs> you know, I just can't. You can't get the. That's another mind thing, right? It's all mind, mental. You know, the, you wait for that second wind to kick in. And it all gets real easy. And you know, once you get past that initial. Oh, I hate this. Uh, you know, it gets better. And I just haven't been willing to, you know, push through the I hate this part. You know, to get to the it's better. And it's, oh, it's just a log. It did look like it was growing in an arch. This is an interesting half a bridge thing. That's kind of weird. I guess the other side got washed off or something. Because it does kind of want you to... Just kind of want to just push you, <laughs> you know. Just want to just push you off the bridge. Yeah, it's lovely, lovely. Babbling and such. You can hear it babbling. Hmm. Kind of tired. A long walk ahead of me. Long walk. <sighs> Miles to go. Or ice, rest, or sleep, or rest, or sleep. I have to go back here sometime. There's a little pond over there. Yeah, it's sort of in the backyard of the Richies. <laughs> so you gotta be careful not to offend anybody by walking on the semi private public property thing. So, anyway, enough of that. So, I guess that's about it. So as a kid, they hadn't developed any of this. So this, this ended right here. This was all being deforest for the development they put up in there. And, uh, you know. <laughs> and just, you know. But it's all kind of grown in. It was kind of an environmental mess for years. But obviously has matured into a fairly nice arrangement. There's a lot of water here. If I come here in the summer, I bet you that won't be as much water there. There's some garbage when you get there. Yeah. You know, last time I was here, that was barely a trickle. Anyway, I think I've probably wasted enough of your time. I will get to just walking instead of talking. So, good news is, it worked out okay. I did my little civic duty thing, and it was a nice day, and it was okay. Let's go on walk. <laughs> so, until later. <laughs>